population and the rate has declined, that it's gone along, that's coincided with the rise of the middle class. <clears throat> so it seems to me it's hard to tease apart the spread of contraceptive rights <clears throat> from just the rise of the middle class. Isn't it possible that in Africa, for example, that the emphasis should be more on uh, promoting the rise of the middle class rather than, uh, not that the two are, are, no, are mutually exclusive, but it seems to me it might be more important to stress the rise of the middle class. Well, here's the thing. Um, the, uh, the, the, the traditional uh, way of thinking about this is something called the demographic transition, which simply means as you get more affluent and get more education and you move into a different sector of the economy, you tend to have smaller families. And, and that's, that's fine. It sort of echoes that a rising tide lifts all ships. Well, it doesn't lift the ships that don't have a bottom. They stay sunk as they were. Part of the challenge here, and I'll give you one fact which sort of helps to... to, to to focus on it. It's impossible to have a middle class without a good education system. It costs 10 times as much to educate a woman, or man for that matter, in, say, Africa, as it does to provide that wo a woman with contraception. So imagine, if you will, that you were the Minister of Health and Education in a small African nation, and you have a budget, and you have 10 million women in need. You can provide all 10 million women with contraception, or you can educate a million of them and leave the other nine million to fend as best they can. Now that's a Sophie's choice, it's a horrible choice. And I don't know what the right answer is. But it is possible to short circuit the process and flip it around. For example, in, uh, in Indonesia, if you compare the Philippines and Indonesia, in the Philippines, wealthy, well-educated people have small families, poor, uneducated people have big families, because contraception is hard to get. In Indonesia, Family planning is readily available without regard to cost. The contraceptive prevalence rate, the rate at which women use contraception, is basically almost the same regardless of whether you're rich or poor. So you can short circuit. I would, sub I would submit that the fastest way to get to where you want to go is universal access to contraception and awareness of it. But it isn't, it, you know, there are 220 countries on Earth, if you want to, what to call a country. There isn't a one-size-fits-all. For example, a, a study a few months ago by the Guttmacher Institute in New York asked women in developing countries in Africa who had had an unplanned birth, who had not used contraception, why didn't you use it? Only 8% of them said because they hadn't heard of it or couldn't afford it. The other 92% gave other reasons. The biggest reason, 25%, was fear of side effects. Now that fear could be due either to misinformation or to the fact that perhaps where they lived there was only one form of contraception available for women and that method caused big problems for them and they couldn't switch to another, you know, whether they couldn't switch to another physical, method. You mean physical side effects? Yes. Yeah, they just have, you know, that, that a particular, some women, a particular formula, formulation of the pill doesn't work. Uh, IUDs aren't sort of what they used to be and they're they work very well for many women. There are other choices. Uh, but anyway, and I'll get right to your point in a second. The other 92% of the women gave the following reasons. 25% said fear of side effects, which is often due to lack of information. Uh, a very large, like something like 17% said that they basically were misinformed about the, the effects of breastfeeding. And they didn't realize that you have to, the child has to be getting 100% of its nourishment from breastfeeding for breastfeeding to serve as an effective contraceptive. If the child is being weaned off, then it's not going to work. Partner objection, family objections, religious objections, all of these things played into it. So it's a complex dynamic and it varies from country to country. Yes? Just your point on partner objections, not objections, a side effect. Um, when you ask your husband to put on a condom, um, he will beat you oftentimes. Yes. And that's and a side again, effect. Yeah, no, well, that's, that's true. That's a good point. That's a good point. And, you know, it's, you know, where one leaves off and another picks up is hard to say. But, uh, you know, one of, the, one of the, and again, I'm not trying to make light of a serious situation here, but, uh, by the way, one of the rules we have with our aid, and we provide about $640 million a year for family planning aid around the world, that's two dollars per American per year, and that's two bucks. I don't know about the what else the federal government's doing with your money, but you can feel good about those two bucks at least. It's a pretty reasonable investment. 
One of the rules we have is we do not experiment on women around the world. We do not provide any form of contraception anywhere in the world that an American woman with a prescription can't walk into a pharmacy and get. One of the methods that, that is available for women around the world and in this country through our government around the world is injectable, three-month injectable contraceptives, the Depo shot and others. And the great advantage to that, of course, is the woman can go to the next village, get the shot, and never tell her husband. And he said, why aren't you having children? She could say, well, I should have married your brother Salim. I guess he's the real man in the family. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> that won't result in a beating. No. no, that won't help. But no, it, it is, you know, and I don't mean to leave men off the hook. Because violence against women, you know, in South Africa, a woman is more likely to be raped than she is to learn to read. More likely to be raped than she is to learn to read. The rape rate is higher than the literacy rate. I'm not letting men off the hook for a minute. But I also don't think, I also think that if women around the world have to wait until men get smart, they're going to be waiting a while and they shouldn't have to. So you use whatever methods you can. Marie Stopes, which was one of the fine family planning organizations around the world, works in Afghanistan with local men who are tribal leaders to get them to understand how they should change the way they perceive women. There are great, there's a program, I forget which African country, where, in, where when young girls go to school from poor, poor families, if they show up on time, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then they show up on time for class on Friday, they get a market basket of food to take back to the family. Now, all of a sudden, they're an important part of the family, and their father is saying, you get up, you go to school, that's important, that's your yeah. job. So by making, you know, it's a shame you have to do that, but it's also a pretty expedient way to solve a problem. So all of these things kind of tie together. I think we have just one more. Yeah, yes, to... sir, you had a... I'm just curious about what kind of challenges for your organization are caused by the demographic shift that sees the countries that advocate what we're advocating, you know, the Northern European right. countries, the North American, they have a certain kind of population challenge which is the opposite because they're not reproducing themselves uh, or it could be called a challenge. Uh, yep, no, that's, that's debatable. That's a good point. Um, and while the poor countries, and of course, as, as we've been talking about, are, are growing, what kind of challenges does it present for your organization and for your message when people see this dichotomy and, and start thinking, the problem isn't population growth, it's lack of it. You know, our right. people are, you know, us versus them, so on. Sure. Well, it, it operates on two levels. I'll just mention two levels. First of all, it, it is in some ways more challenging today because Americans have stopped at two children and they're showing no sign of, in fact, family size has declined for the last three years in the U.S., probably because of the recession, but it, it's basically stayed around two, 2.1 replacement rate for 30 years show no sign of changing. Incidentally, Catholics have smaller families than Protestants in the United States, which I always find to be a fascinating fact. And 98% of all Catholic women who are sexually active have used some form of artificial contraception. So I think it's always important not to confuse the Vatican, which has a terrible position on all of this, mm -hmm. with many rank and file Catholics. I mean, Nancy Pelosi has been a great leader on these issues. She considers herself a devout Catholic, Mother of five, goes to mass regularly, been a great supporter of these issues. So, you know, we, you know, again, you sort of have to slice things. You know, the bishops are terrible on these issues. Uh, great on some other social issues. Uh, you know, some a Jesuit once pointed out. He said we Catholics tend to be way to the left and way to the right. You mm -hmm. know, and and you know when it comes to issues around hunger and and the death penalty and other things, they have a very creditable record. So it, it gets complex on our issues of terror. But back to your point, the first problem is that because people don't see the problem so much around them, they tend to think it's gone away. The second problem is the underlying issue. Somebody should write a book called Everything's a Problem. No matter what you do in life, something's <laughs> going to be a problem. Take Japan as an example, because Japan was, was really the first country to reach population decline for reasons due to positive development. It's not like Russia where everything's just basically going to hell. That's why population is declining there. And, and Japanese, there's never been a country 
that has managed to push its fertility rate back up above replacement rate once it has gone below for positive reasons. Think about what Japan feels it needs. It needs more people to do semi-skilled and manual labor. How many young Japanese people do you think want to raise their children to be subway cleaners or rice farmers? Not that those are dishonorable things to do. They have, in my view, a cultural problem masquerading as a demographic problem. All they would have to do in Japan is put up a giant help wanted sign almost anywhere in Asia on the mainland. And they would have more menial and semi-skilled workers who would work at very low wages than they would know what to do with. Japan wants to remain Japanese. That's their right, as long as they do so in a not horrible fashion. If they don't want to have to fight people to come live in their country, fine by me. But they can't have it both ways. You know, the parents don't want their kids to grow up and move into menial labor. They don't want to bring anybody in to do the menial labor. So it's a challenge. Now, if you look at Europe, uh, you know, the population is, is heading toward a decline in Europe. The EU is probably going to see a population decline over the next 40 years. You know, there are a lot of moving parts to this puzzle. The key to having a healthy economy in today's world is to have a highly educated, healthy workforce. Because a highly educated, healthy workforce is all things, other things being equal, going to be more productive. You know, as Herman Daly, who talks a lot about, written a lot about these issues from the University of Maryland, says, we don't necessarily need more economic growth, but what we need is more development of resources. We need to figure out a way to do more with less. And, and that's, you know, that's the kind of success we need. And who's going to figure that out? People with a good education, people who are healthy. You know, Europe had to go through a lot of transitions. The reintegration of East Germany into West Germany. Into Germany was no small task. They figured it out. This is, this is a task that, that clearly they can, they can figure out. Uh, what ultimately happens with societies, and it's where we are probably heading by 2050, is for the last 200 years, Almost every society on earth has been a triangle. Lots of young people, a whole bunch of workers, very few old people. By 2050, the United States will probably be a rectangle. Lots of old people, lots of workers, lots of young people. But once you get to that point, you actually have a stable, kind of steady state where you just have to continue it. One final point about Europe and Japan. It stands to reason that if you have more old people because you're having fewer children, you're probably going to need more retirement communities, but you're not going to need as many elementary schools. You're going to need more gerontologists, but not as many pediatricians. You know, frankly, women at both ends of the age spectrum tend to be the primary caregivers. But if you consider the opportunity cost when a parent, more often than not still the mother, the woman, is out of the paid, not, not, heaven knows not out of the workforce, but out of the paid workforce for many years raising children, or has her hours or progress limited because she's taken on that task, or man or woman, whichever. When you have smaller families, that injects more workers in, into the workforce. So it's not a, a steady state kind of situation. You know, it's not a zero-sum game is a better phrase to use. Take maybe yeah, two we, more uh, questions. We have, We're we done? Have to, okay. We have Very, to end. Very good. They no them. problem. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Thank you. Thank you. Learn and if anybody can get a magazine, you're welcome to watch. Oh, yeah, it's a John Paul. And there's a yellow good. legal pad if anybody's been thinking they're not getting enough email. <laughs> but if you'd like to be on our list, you can just jot your name down in there. We don't share it.